With the recent announcement of Spark... <laughs> Let me quit around. They just announced Sparking Zero as the title for Budokai Tenkaichi 4, and we got a whole ass gameplay trailer, but I feel like there's a lot of things in this trailer that people missed because we were too excited. So I'm gonna go over it again for you so I make sure that we're all on the same page as we await more info on this game. Let's do it. Just like we're not gonna waste any time getting into these details that you might have missed, the trailer wastes no time in throwing in some slick things that people might not be able to catch right away. Off the rip, we see Goku and Vegeta fighting in this desert environment. We get a shot of the desert, and then we see a couple of dash marks as Goku and Vegeta destroy some of the stuff around them before they dash out of the smoke cloud and begin their battle. To me, this is so obviously some sort of dynamic intro that we're going to be seeing when characters load up into maybe free battle or even the battles in the story mode where these characters don't just Unlike previous Budokai Tenkaichi games where we just got some shots of the map and it would come down to the characters standing in front of each other, posed up to fight and exchanging unique dialogue, it seems like we're going to have unique animations for every map as we load in and the characters start their battle because as you can see at the start, the dash marks, you can't even make out that it's Goku and Vegeta until the actual character models dash out of the smoke. So immediately, I'm already a fan of this. The dynamic intros look sick. We only got to see one. I wonder if they're going to be unique per the maps that we get in the game because obviously there's going to be stages like the Tournament of Power stage, which don't really have a lot of rubble for the characters to clash into. So again, I'm thinking maybe we'll have unique dynamic intros for every different stage. And I'm sure the animations could also vary per character matchup. Either way, great addition from Spike Chunsoft. I'm excited to see it in the game. Next in the trailer and next on the list, we've got destructible environments. At a portion of the trailer, Vegeta sledgehammers Goku into one of the pillars in this desert area arena where they're fighting, and it is actually fully completely destroyed by the recoil of Goku hitting into it. This is just one of the many examples of the destructive environments in this game, which they praise a lot and make a lot of points in the write-ups on the websites and for the wish listings that you can do for the game. They really play up the fact that everything is destructible in this game. And there's other points in the trailer where we can see that this is true. Broly's scene, a lot of people didn't notice. It looked like he was either in some sort of grab move or maybe one of his rush attacks in the game. But if you notice, as he's slamming Goku, the environment is actually reacting to Goku being slammed into the ground. We have never seen anything like that in a Dragon Ball game before, let alone any of the arena fighters. The environment reacting to rush moves is completely new and really exciting. And then you've got some smaller destructive elements like when Goku and Vegeta fire their respective beams, the Kamehameha and the Gallic Gun. You can see the rocks under them and some dust clouds build up as they fire them. So yeah, they really leveled up the amount of destructive environments and things that can be destroyed on these maps. It's just going to further immerse people into the game and into the battle. So exciting stuff. And another point for Spike Chunsoft. One of the smaller things I want to note here that I noticed by going frame by frame in the trailer is when Goku appears to snap vanish Vegeta's Gallic Gun, it doesn't look like just your normal Budokai Tenkaichi snap vanish. It looks like Goku raises his right hand to his forehead as he does to perform the instant transmission. So I wonder if characters might have unique dodge animations or if this is something exclusive to Goku or characters that can use the instant transmission to teleport away from attacks. I don't know, it could be interesting. Maybe like a spot dodge of sorts? I don't know, again, really small detail, but I did just want to point that out, is it could be cool. Then we've got something making its way into the Budokai Tenkaichi series that's previously only been seen in the Raging Blast series. And yes, I'm talking about the beam reflections. One thing I do want to note about this beam period that Vegeta performs is that it is all in game. Previously in Raging Blast 2, it would throw you and the character into a cutscene of them smacking the blast away, and then it would come back to the battle and you'd just be completely reset. But here, it seems Vegeta reflects it in real time. And again, that destructible environment reacts in real time. So I wonder, can these beam reflex, you know, can you smack them back to the person that threw them at you and maybe cause damage to them or something? Of course, we don't know at this point. But again, another interesting detail that people might not have picked up on right away, but I definitely think is worth mention. And then as we wrap up the Goku and Vegeta portion of this trailer before we get into all the Frieza and Broly stuff, Goku and Vegeta both beam clash in Super Saiyan Blue with their ultimates, the Super Kamehameha and the Final Flash. But most notably, we obviously don't get to see the full beam clash, but when they do clash, a Broly Dimension Rift pops up. So just a little bit of headcanon here. I wonder maybe if you tie in beam clashes or beam clashes go on long enough without someone being like a clear victor, maybe we could see like the Broly Dimension break 
and then that's where the characters start battling for a while just like they did in the broly movie it is completely possible especially with the power of these next gen consoles we've seen stuff like that in spider-man with the black cat mission and ratchet and clank with the jumping through dimensions at a second moment so i would not be surprised if this is one of the things they've decided to take advantage of with the new hardware that we're getting our new sparking zero budokai tenkai h4 on so that's another interesting little thing to note then we cut to freezer performing his death ball ultimate which looks a little different than it did in budokai tenkai h3 this definitely isn't the namek one that he used looks a little more like the one that he used in the tournament of power against topo but that's not the point the point is frieza takes the whole destructible environment thing we talked about earlier and takes it to a whole new level as he destroys the entire stage now this isn't new to the budokai tenkai h3 series but i did just want to point out that a lot of people might not have noticed that frieza does destroy planet namek and then you can see him and super saiyan blue vegeta battling it up on the destroyed version of namek which looks so good by the way though i do wonder what the conditions are to destroy the planet i wonder maybe if the enemy dodges and your attack hits the planet that's when the planet gets destroyed or can the planet also be destroyed if your enemy takes the blast head on and just happens to hit the ground as they're reacting to the blast as well i don't know that's another thing that we'll just learn more in due time but again i still think it's worth noting then it seems like we get Goku performing another ultimate attack, but this time the dash fist that he used against Freeze before they departed for the Tournament of Power when they tied in their uh, little fight they had, the little skirmish. It seems like that's the attack that Goku's using here. And the reason I'm assuming this is an ultimate and not a rush move is because it's very dramatic in its animations. Like Goku charges it up for quite a while and it looks pretty good. So what this tells me is that obviously, unlike Budokai Tenkai H3, characters will probably have either multiple ultimates able to use in one battle or we will have ultimates to choose from for every character, which I think is the best way to go about it. I really hope that is the case. So very slick of Van Dyne then, but they're already showing off that characters are gonna have multiple ultimates and multiple super moves that we can probably choose from ourselves in Sparking Zero. And in between Goku showing off his new little ultimate, we've got a bunch of flash shots of a bunch of characters that they are revealing for the game. But two of them most notably confirm something very big and very important to the roster size of this game. We get a shot of Z Trunks in his Saiyan armor that he used to fight Cell alongside Vegeta. And then we get a shot of Dragon Ball Super Trunks in his fit obviously taking place in the future Goku Black arc. And just looking at these two screenshots side by side, this fully confirms to me that we will be getting era based characters in the game. What I mean by that is if you haven't played Budokai Tenkaichi 3, certain characters took up multiple slots by themselves, but just in different iterations of themselves. For example, we had Goku early, we had Goku mid, lol, and we had Goku end, respectively his Saiyan saga, Frieza slash Cell saga, and then his Boo saga appearances. And just the fact alone that Dragon Ball Super Trunks is holding his sword and prepping for his attack, and this Saiyan armor Trunks doesn't even have his sword on hand, tells me that we're probably going to be getting era-based characters in this game, so we're going to have a Trunks Z version and a Trunks Super version, which tells me that we're probably going to get the same for a lot of other even bigger cast members, obviously, i.e. Gohan through all his different ages, maybe a Goku Z, a Goku Super. I do also want to note that some people might not know this, but we do have from the most credible Dragon Ball source these days, Dragon Ball Super Hype. He let us know that his sources tell him that the roster spans from OG Dragon Ball all the way to Daima, which is insane, an insane number of characters, which they boast all over their social medias, quoting the game as having a historic roster from other Budokai Tenkaichi games. And with the size of BT3's roster, we, we're in for a good one, people. And for those of you that want to question his credibility, this man knew about the trailer and everything that was going to be in it on November 28th. So let's not discredit the man. And last for the trailer, but certainly not least, the fact that Sparking Zero is only going to release on the current generation of consoles. Thank God. I'm sorry to all the people out there with PS4s and only Xbox Ones. Look, this game probably ain't coming out until late 2024 or early 2025. That's a year for you to stack your bread, get your money, you know what I'm saying? So that you can hop on these current gen consoles and have the best experience. And thank God they're not doing the old ones because that was only gonna hinder this game, them having to tone things down and tone down the graphics because these other consoles wouldn't be able to handle it. So it looks like we're gonna be unleashing the new and fullest power of all these consoles here on Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. Oh, and funny enough, that's probably another thing we can note. The fact that the title of the game is just Dragon Ball Sparking Zero and doesn't really confine itself to an era like Super or Z. But yeah, that's going to do it for everything you missed in regards to the Sparking Zero gameplay trailer. If you guys enjoyed these discussion videos, please make sure to leave a like because it's kind of the first one I've done of these. So let me know if you want to see more of these in the future with games that we already cover on the channel, i.e. the Dragon Ball mobile games. 
Again, if you enjoyed the video, subscribe, like, it's always appreciated. And as always, this is your boy Slavix, signing off. Later.